Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make the forearm plates for the clone trooper we're currently working on. Uh, this piece is pretty easy. It's basically just a cylinder that goes from the elbow all the way to the wrist. Uh, but other than that, let's get started. So starting off, go to front view on your notepad. So press 1. Uh, we're basically going to be using this front profile and side view. So if you go to side view, press 3 on your notepad, you should already have it set up. Uh, you can go back to the first video of the series to learn how to set up these image references. And I'll include a link in the description below. For this video, we'll basically just be switching between side view and front view. Pretty much only that. Just click this button here. You can also click the X to go to side. It's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do starting off, I'm going to go to side view. You can press the X or press 3 on your numpad. Shift right click right about here or here. It's up to you. Press Shift A, Mesh, let's create a cylinder. Let's rotate it a bit. It's RX90. Rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. You could also use this little tool here. Let's rotate using arrows. Now I'm going to move this piece over. Pretty much match it to the side view here. Right about here uh, from the front view. We can go ahead and start rotating the piece. Press RX. And just kind of rotate it to match the angle. So now we need to go into edit mode and start editing the mesh of the uh, object that we just created. So it's a bit small. We need to scale it up a bit. Let's press S to scale it up. You can click the CO thing here. Click on this little icon or press S for a shortcut. Uh, but now we're going to go into edit mode and start tweaking the shape of this piece. So to go into edit mode, just click up here or you can press tab. We're going to grab this face here. Go to side view and scale it up and move it to the back. So press G and move it to the back. Uh, if you don't know how to drag faces, you can just click this little icon here or press three on your keyboard and move faces around. Go to front view and do the same. Match to the reference here. Right now it's fully covering, which is good. Uh, so now I'm going to grab this face here, press S then X and make it a little bit wider without actually making it taller. So looks good. So now what we're basically going to do is go ahead and add some holes in these sides here. So this is a piece that wraps around the arm. It should have some holes for the arm to fit through. So you can grab this face here and this one as well, front and back. Hold down shift so you can select both of them. Press I to inset and left click. Pretty much once you're happy with it, you'll basically just use your mouse to drag inward. And then left click to finalize it. I'd say having a good thickness. Uh, you don't want it to be too thick, but that's about good. So with these two faces now selected, uh, you can press X to delete them. Press X and the faces. And so what we're going to do is basically add a filler in piece here. So grab these uh, front edge loops. So go press two on your keyboard. Hold down Shift and Alt and select the inner edge. It should be orange when it's highlighted. And you can do the same on the back. Hold down Shift Alt, select the back edge loops. Now what we're going to do is press right click, bridge edge loops. And that'll add in a new filter face uh, for us. So from here, we're pretty much just tweaking the mesh to match the shape of the reference here. We still have some edits to make. So I'm gonna grab these edges here, these faces. Hold down Shift and select some of these side faces here. We'll go to side view and we'll turn on the proportional editing tool. You can press O on your keyboard or click the button right here. And we're just going to move it back. And sc scroll up with your mouse or down, uh, basically to increase the circle size, make it a little bit easier. Same for the top here. And grab some of these vertices. You can go into wireframe mode here. Press Z on your keyboard, just go to wireframe, and you can just select around the vertices and move them into position. Press C to select a bunch at the same time. So we'll grab these here, rotate them a bit, and just kind of match the overall shape of the piece. You can go into uh, front view and do the same. So these should all be down a bit. There is a, a bit of a difference between the references, which is fine, 
just do your best to kind of find a balance between the two references here. So front and side view are slightly uh, different from each other. Just make something looks good. So final couple tweaks of the piece before we're done. Uh, you can see here on the front view that the piece has a slight uh, like flat face to it, like a little bit of, of a line here. That just means it sticks out a bit. That's pretty easy to do. You can just grab this face on the side, press Rx, kind of rotate it a bit, and move it outward a tad bit. Too much, just a little bit. It'll create a little bit of a uh, stick out. I think that looks good. So we're approaching the end of the video. Uh, let's go ahead and finish off this model here and go back into object mode. Right click to shade smooth and add a subdivision modifier. If you want to keep it low poly, you can basically avoid this. And all you have to do to fix the shading is to click on this little button here, go to normals and click auto smooth. That'll make the smoothing pretty nice for you. You just plan on basically transporting this over to a game engine up here. I'm going to make it a little bit more high poly. So add subdivision modifier, and we need to fill in the sharpness. Let's go into edit mode and control R on the inside loop here. And then left click and then drag your mouse inward and left click again. Do the same for the outside as well. Control R right in the middle, left click, move your mouse outward, and left click again. Do the same for the side here. Control R and control R. You can tweak the shape a bit just to kind of make it a little bit nicer. So uh, we have some shading problems. It's no problem to fix these little lines here. Uh, we just need to go on the outside of this piece and add some edge loops on both ends. Control R, left click, move this one to the front, and Control R again, and move this one to the back. That should fix our shading problems pretty easily. But other than that, we're pretty much done with this piece. So now you can basically just go ahead and apply your modifier. You can turn to the poly counts if you want to. It doesn't make a huge difference since it's already pretty high poly. Uh, but basically, go ahead and apply it. Just press this little icon here, press apply. So now we have a fully made uh, little forearm piece. Uh, this last step is optional, but you can grab your piece. You can press Shift D to duplicate it, just so you have a backup in case you mess up the main one here. You can move this piece over. If you have a base mesh, which I'm using for this series, just as a placeholder, uh, just to showcase our armor pieces and to kind of fit them onto a piece. So basically, for this, you'll just uh, go into edit mode and scale up the piece to kind of match it to your base mesh's uh, basically proportions. You can scale it up, rotate it a bit more, move it back. I already have one here, but I'm just showing this as an example. You can scale it on the x axis, make it a bit shorter. And to symmetrize it across to the other side of the base mesh, to add a modifier, mirror modifier, and set the mirror object as the base mesh. Alright guys, that's the end of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, next time, I'll be making the little uh, hand piece that goes right about here. Look on the reference, it's just this little tiny square on the uh, hands, top of the hands. Pretty simple. Uh, so stay tuned. But I hope you guys found this video useful, and see you guys next time.